What's up, sons? It's Blind Drive with Sound Tech once again, and welcome to yet another video. Today, I'm gonna to go over some of the things you should think about doing when selling a used PC. So this is specifically for you if you are trying to sell a PC that you have completely built and have been using previously. So we're gonna go into that right now. Welcome back. So I currently have a PC that I just sold and I haven't actually prepped it yet. So I thought it was a great time to go ahead and go over this. The rest of the ones that I have up for sale have been prepped, but we need to do this. Now this one's going to be a little bit different because in some cases, in a lot of cases, you can reset Windows 10. If you're interested in that method, let me know in the comment section below. However, today we're going to be going over completely reinstalling the operating system, primarily due to the fact that this currently has Ubuntu on it because go Linux go download it tell people you want Steam games on Linux do it tangent aside let's hop into reinstalling Windows 10 and some of the things you should change after you have installed the operating system if you're going to be selling it on the used market such as something like Craigslist or Facebook marketplace okay so first things first we're just gonna power on the PC and hear that water running mmm Oh, yeah, the Elgato and the particular AMD graphics card that is in this system doesn't really allow us to get into the BIOS. So we're going to have to screen record it actually because it's just going to take us straight into the operating system, I believe. Yeah, so we're going to have to actually screen record this with the camcorder, unfortunately. And as you can see here, we do have uh, Ubuntu currently installed so what I'm gonna do is swap out the HDMI cable to go directly into the monitor I'm gonna tell it yes to go ahead and pop us into there pop a lock in and then we're gonna restart it and now we're just gonna tap delete to get into the BIOS hopefully Okay, so now that we're in the BIOS, there's a couple things I want to do right off the bat. I never suggest selling a U system with an applied overclock. If they are not smart enough to overclock the system themselves, then it's probably not to your ad, it's probably not to your advantage to leave it overclocked as it could cause some issues. And just to be safe, I definitely recommend coming and loading optimized defaults. But before you continue on outside of the BIOS, the next thing that you wanna do is actually go ahead and take a look at the advanced memory settings and make sure that they still have the XMP profile enabled. Now, if you enable the XMP profile on a lot of Intel systems now, it will enable something called MCE. This is an AMD system, so we don't have to worry about it, but I want to make a note to make sure that you guys turn off multi-core enhancement after you enable the XMP profile because that could also cause issues for the end user and you really don't want anybody calling you back saying, hey, the computer's having issues or blue screening. So once we're done with that, we're actually going to save and exit and then we are going to get back into the BIOS to make sure that the settings applied. Okay, so the memory setting is applied and we're all good to go. The next step is we're just going to install the USB stick into the computer. And this should be your Windows 10 USB install device. If you guys need a how-to on how to create a Windows 10 USB install device, let me know and I will go ahead and try to do something for you. I'm not sure if it's needed because there's a ton of how-tos, but if you would rather me do it, just let me know and we can spin up a quick video. For now, just figure out how to make one and continue along. So now we are going to actually save and exit and we are probably gonna be tapping F11 to select our boot, depending on the motherboard. It should tell you in the bottom left hand of the screen, it's F12. So at this point, we're gonna select our USB stick for partition one. And at this point, I should be able to swap it back over to the Elgato, but we'll find out in just a second. Let me see if it'll work now. It should. Okay, yeah, it definitely did. So that's awesome. So at this point, we are in the install screen. Give it one second here. And for the Windows 10 install screen, you're just gonna click next and click install now. Now, 
if you have already activated Windows previously, you don't need to re-enter this key. You'll be fine to continue on with I don't have a product key because it should pull it off of your motherboard. However, it is still always a good idea to pull the key from the operating system, which I can do for you guys in another how-to video. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comment section below and have that on record in case it doesn't activate or if it fails to activate. You also might have received a sticker with your key if it wasn't a digital license. And so if that's the case, you can also just check your case for it. I'm gonna click, I don't have one, and I'm gonna select Windows 10 Pro because that's the license that's on this motherboard and click next. Accept the license agreement and click custom install. Now at this point, we want to completely reinstall the entire system. So we're gonna delete both partitions and then we are just gonna click next. You can go ahead and click new here first, but I, I'm fine with just clicking next on the unallocated space on this single drive. And we will install Windows and be right back. Okie dokie, so once you have gotten to this screen, stop. Because this is what is known as the out of box experience, which is what you want the person you're selling it to, to, well, experience. To get past this, you can do Control Shift F3, and that will enter you into audit mode. The reason this is important is because we want to get into audit mode and make sure we install all of the drivers along with any libraries or anything like that. And I like to install TeamViewer. TeamViewer is free and you can use it however you like. And the reason I like to use TeamViewer in this particular situation is because if I'm going to have them call and say something's wrong, I can just ask them to open TeamViewer. And at that point I can log in and see if anything's going on with their system that I don't actually have to drive back out to their house for, which is always helpful. Okay, so as you can see now, we are in the out of box experience. I'm gonna see if we can get the capture card to work for it. Now that we are in the out of box experience, we are going to not use this system preparation tool quite yet. I'll show you guys what to do with that in a second. What we want to do is get the drivers. Primary drivers that I like to always get right off the bat is graphics drivers just because it makes the system easier to work with. So head to whoever manufactures your, your particular GPU drivers, in this case it's AMD, and head on to their website and grab the driver. I think AMD, you just hit the downloads, etc. Driver and support, and we're gonna grab the R9 series and this one in particular is going to be the Fury series and we have the Fury Nano in this one. If you want to check this build out, I'll link it up in the corner for you. So now we have Windows 10, so we're going to grab this Windows 10 64-bit version, run save. We're just going to run that real quick. The great thing about selling a PC with a single drive is you really only have to install right away. It makes things a lot quicker. Next thing I want to check while that goes on is the Windows activation by right clicking and going into system and just confirming that everything is honky dory as far as the product licensing going ahead and activating. So I'm happy with that. It actually does look like we ran into an Oh, so in some cases, yeah, you might have to actually go in and click the troubleshoot and make sure that it's activated. Just a heads up, make sure that you get that activated. Worst case, you could click the change product key and type your key in again, like I talked about earlier. I'm gonna do the express install of the graphics driver, which will require a reboot. And usually while that's installing, I'll head on over to Ninite. So Ninite can't be used in a business um, in a, a business form. So if you're using this for your business, it's technically against the terms of service. If you are selling a used system, it's perfectly okay to use. What I usually wanna get is all of the run times, just so they don't run into any issues there. 
I'll usually just check Firefox and Chrome, install both of them and they can just see it there as they do it. That way we can also kind of try to force them away from using Edge if they're a new user. And usually Chrome is the best, however, you know, just having Firefox on there is good. I use Firefox personally. The next thing that I stated earlier was getting TeamViewer on there because I always want to have TeamViewer on in case I need to get in and see if anything's wrong. Now for my particular audience, they are almost all gamers, if not all gamers. So I go ahead and just install Steam for them right off the bat and then come down here and click get your Ninite. I'll save that and run this. And then all of those applications will be installed for all users no matter what, unless we clicked uh, to wipe the system again. So it just makes it a little easier for, you know, whoever you are building it for. And I think it, it just adds a nice little, a nice little touch. Now for this user, I'm not going to install Relive. I'm going to go ahead and skip that because we do want to try to force them into using uh, something like OBS with H.264 because this particular system is a Ryzen 7 2700. So if they ask me about that, we'll go over that later. You don't really want them encoding with the GPU on this particular system. Now, since we have installed the drivers and I have now just said I'll reboot later and I'll have to Okay, so now that we've installed the GPU driver, it did say that we have to reboot later, but I am going to go ahead and head into Device Manager and just check and see if the device, the display driver is being detected, and yes, it is. Now, I do have all of these devices that have not been installed. There's two ways you can handle this. One is going to be going in and finding the drivers. Two is going to be running Windows Updates first. So what I do like to do is just go into Windows Updates and check for the drivers at this point now that I have the video driver and see if it picks up the drivers automatically. Nine times out of 10 it will, sometimes it won't. And as you can see here, we do have quite a few updates. So we're gonna let these run and we'll be back later. Okie dokie, so now that we have the all the Windows updates, we're going to go ahead and close and restart. Uh, but we can already see here that yes, all the Windows updates took care of all of the drivers. So we have pretty much all of the drivers installed, not pretty much, all of the drivers installed, as well as the GPU drivers and such. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot we do have a pending update that requires a restart so we're going to do that and then we are going to put it into out of box experience okie dokie so everything here spun up just fine i don't know what display he's going to be using i will set this to 200 percent just because it's probably not going to matter because whatever display he's going to choose is going to be different and we can walk him through that if we need to so finally all we're going to do is use this system preparation tool while we're in audit mode to put the system into out of box experience do not click generalize because that would remove all of the drivers and we want this particular system to have all the drivers all ready to go and on our shutdown options, I'm gonna say shutdown and I'm gonna pack the system up and deliver it. So click okay. Alrighty, son, so that is going to wrap up prepping a system for, of course, a, a person that you're selling it to. And I think that there's not a lot of people that do that kind of content and just showing you guys my process so you guys are aware of what I do and how I handle it, I think is an interesting journey. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like, subscribe, and do the little bell thing down at the bottom. That'd be cool. You can also check out some videos up here or hit the sub button on the actual video itself. Until next time, I'll see you next Tuesday.